Collecting watches is not as easy as it seems. I've been super struggling recently to find the perfect everyday dress watch for my collection. I even recently bought a Cartier Santos for this purpose, but something just wasn't right. In fact, I've been struggling to fill this slot in my collection for quite some time now, and I've basically landed on this cheap pre-owned quartz piece to fill the gap. And I'm actually really happy with it. Yes, I tried watches costing much more, thousands more in fact, but something was missing. Hello there, my name's Kieran, welcome to Top Tier Ticker, I hope you're having a good day. Today I'll take you through my personal collecting struggles of finding the perfect classy everyday watch, the two failures and the one potential success. Hopefully by sharing my experiences with you guys, you can avoid making the mistakes that I did. Now this actually started back in May 2023. I picked up this cheap Cartier tank ripoff from AliExpress for £15. I thought if I don't like it, I'll just give it to a charity shop, no dramas. Turns out, I absolutely loved it. I wore it way more than I ever thought I would to formal events, around the house. I have more than had my money's worth with this watch. But naturally, I started to think about what's next. Although I was enjoying the sander, it does have a lot of flaws, mainly the durability. As it's made from a chrome plated zinc, it has a mineral glass and basically no water resistance. So obviously I wanted something that's a bit more durable. Something with a steel case, sapphire crystal, at minimum. And hopefully something with a bit more originality and refinement but definitely keeping the same style. So white dial, Roman numerals, and a classy aesthetic. Then towards the end of 2023, whilst doing my end of the year state of the collection, it made me realize I wanted to consolidate down and focus on a smaller core collection. You know, the less is more approach. So naturally you start to plan what your collection might look like. I'm talking what styles of watches you might want, what brands you might want to own, establishing some sort of balance between each model, making sure you have a watch for every single occasion that could possibly occur, you know, stuff that doesn't matter whatsoever in the real world, but absolutely matters to us watch nerds. And one category of watch that I absolutely wanted to have in my core collection was the classy everyday watch. Basically what my sander provided, but in a much more durable package. That's when the hunt and desire really began to fill this slot. And the following watches are the pieces that I have bought to try and fill the gap. Now the first watch that I bought to fill this slot, I honestly thought was gonna be the one. It was a watch that I'd had my heart set on for over a year. Back in mid 2023, when I started to look for the Sander upgrade, this was the watch that captured my heart. Now I decided to stay patient with this purchase and wait for the right time. Basically wait for a good price as it's quite an expensive piece. And Nomos is a brand that I've been fascinated by since I started my watch collecting journey. A fairly modern brand in the grand scheme of things, but one that's made a massive impact on German watchmaking. The brand was founded in 1990 and has basically kept the same designs for over 30 years. Also still one of the only truly independent watchmakers to this day. The Ludwig model was launched in 1991 as a 35 millimeter Bauhaus style watch. The same thing can be said about the watch to this day. In fact, the modern Ludwig is almost identical to its ancestors. So obviously this watch fulfills the requirements for that slot in my collection. It has beautiful Roman numerals, a polite silver dial, and the desired durability upgrade. Not to mention the absolutely beautiful in house manual wine movement. This watch is a proper slice of proper watchmaking. And after wanting one for over a year, I finally picked one up. But pretty much from the moment I unboxed it, something just wasn't right. The watch simply felt a bit awkward on my wrist. The proportions just didn't suit me. Even though I tried the watch on previously and enjoyed it, something felt different. Anyway, I tried it on a few different straps and gave it some time, but nothing really came from it. I find myself not reaching for the watch in the morning and barely thinking about wearing it, which is a shame because I really appreciate what the watch offers, and I think it's absolutely beautiful. But for whatever reason, the Ludwig was a dud. I just didn't get along with it like I thought I would, so I looked for something else. Now this next one wasn't planned like the Nomos, but that one didn't work anyway, so I was willing to try something new. I've been hearing a lot of good things recently about Swiss watch brand Frederic Constant. They're definitely a brand on the up, creating a lot of buzz and excitement about their watches, and it's easy to see why. Frederic Constant are seriously innovating when it comes to affordable watchmaking. They're creating some of the most impressive yet competitively priced mechanical movements on the market. And yes, they're creating these movements themselves in-house. FC again is another brand that is fairly young in the watch industry, being founded in just 1988. But just like Nomos, they've made a big impact. So much so that Citizen acquired FC in 2016 as a way to really get onto the Swiss made ladder with some proper credibility. So FC is a brand that I've been quietly admiring, checking out their catalog now and then and thinking about trying one out. Then it was almost like a light bulb 
humbled moment when I realised that they had a model that fit my collection perfectly. The slimline delivers everything I want for the everyday dress watch in my collection. It has the sapphire, the steel, Roman numerals, silver dial, but most importantly, it was slightly bigger than the Nomos, so offered a potential fix to the problems that the Nomos had. Now, the best part is I managed to snag this watch for about £200 pre-owned on eBay, which is an absolute bargain, and you can often find insane deals on the secondary market on FC because they're so underrated. I popped this watch on a new leather strap and it's been brilliant. I've definitely enjoyed it way more than I did with the Nomos. So how the hell did we get to the point where I ended up picking up a Cartier Santos? To be honest with you, I don't really know. I came across the Santos Galbe model a couple of months back and I just couldn't get it out of my head. The way it looked, the two-tone, the beautiful dial, even the smaller 29mm size was perfect. But I was happy with my FC and I kind of accepted that the Santos was a bit of a grail watch for me and something that I'd pick up in the future. But then the opportunity came up to buy it right now. I hadn't bought anything for a while so I had the funds and one popped up in amazing condition at a fair price. So I did what any intelligent watch nerd would do, hit buy and think very little. Now I very rarely unbox a watch on camera because I think it's pretty boring content but I did it with the Cartier because it was a special occasion you know. First impressions were excellent, the watch looked incredible on wrist and the finishing was super crispy for a 30 year old watch, happy days. But after just a couple hours I started to notice a couple of issues with the watch. Firstly one of the links was actually incorrect for my Galbe model. I believe it was taken from a carré of the same generation. And then one of the links just wouldn't move, it was stuck. Now both of these issues are very minor in the grand scheme of things, but both of these weren't mentioned in the listing of the watch. So as these issues were a surprise to me, it kind of ruined the enjoyment of the watch. I just felt a little bit disappointed when I looked down at my wrist. And that's not the feeling that you want when you look down at a Cartier. Now thankfully I bought the Santos from a very reputable watch dealer here in the UK. I got it from Kibble Watches and they were very quick and super understanding about the situation and accepted my return request almost immediately. If I would have bought this watch from a random seller on eBay that likely wouldn't have been the case and I probably would have just been stuck with the watch. So as it stands I've tried the Nomos Ludwig, the Frederic Constant Slimline and the Cartier Santos Galbe. The only one that I currently own is the £200 pre-owned Slimline and to be honest I'm not sure whether the Santos is a watch I'll go back in for. I mean it was exceptionally beautiful like one of the most beautiful watches I've ever seen in person but something just didn't feel right. Maybe that's just because of the two issues I had with the one I bought, who knows. The Ludwig is a watch that I'm definitely done with. I'm tempted to try out another Nomos model in the future though, maybe the club because I do love the brand but the FC is the watch that has secured the slot in my collection. It is a very good looking watch that's only six millimeters thick by the way and the dial is packed with detail. I also enjoy how it has a 20 millimeter lug width so I can wear it with just about any strap. I'm just not sure whether I want to go with something mechanical yet, time will tell. So even though I tried two luxury watches, I ended up with a cheap pre-owned quartz. Isn't watch collecting a funny old thing? Leave your suggestions down in the comments for another watch that could potentially fill this slot in my collection. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one guys. Bye for now.